I just found out my friend Henry has anorexia. I didn't know that guys can have eating disorders. Do their symptoms differ from the females? Um, you know, we, when we first started Summit uh, a long time ago, when we had our first male present for treatment, we had a large, uh, huge debate about should we let a, a guy into the treatment program, and that's going to change the dynamics of, of things. And what we have discovered, at least, if you were to read a transcript from a, a session and you were to remove any reference to gender, you really can't tell if that's male, male or female. The, the, the issues are, are basically the same. Uh, the thing that we run into oftentimes is men are more reluctant to seek treatment because they think it's a female issue. And it's just like, oh my gosh, I have this female problem. You know, what are people going to think? And that's unfortunate because men do suffer from, from eating disorders. About 20% is our guesstimate of, of people that have anorexia and bulimia are, are male. But uh, very few of them actually seek, seek treatment. Sometimes it presents differently in males because I think they're, especially in the gyms, you're going to see guys that are trying to bulk up and they're not eating healthy and at the same time they are excessively exercising and they may be using steroids. Um, and if you're looking at any of the sports where there's weigh-ins, like wrestling, boxing, that are it's common for them to go drop weight in a very short period of time just to make up the lower weight class and you know, that's eating, eating disorder stuff. Um, but I've had, I just finished treating a guy who was, you know, a young adult and everything presented the same. The anorexia was exactly the same. Um, worried about his thighs being too big, the, the fear phobia, the of, of the food, it was it all presented the same. Right, um, so, you know, we're, we're kind of taking the, the, you know, educating us on the individuals. How about the other way around? As far as you know, saying we're dealing with somebody with an ongoing eating disorder who maybe um, experienced some therapy, some treatment previously, but it, uh, they're relapsing or just continuing to struggle with it. Like, what what um, what what do you guys have to say about the family members who are having trouble? With them, uh, because because they're relapsing. Well, relapsing and the um, for example, my experience is with constant justification. Mm -hmm. There's there's always a reason why they're doing something. You mean that the the sufferer is saying there's always a reason, or the yes. the family is minimizing it? No, no, no. The family's the not suffer. Okay. It's the, it's the individual struggling. So they're still in denial. Yeah. I've had treatment. Nothing's wrong. I'm doing fine. Yeah. Again, it's you approach, but you don't look good. You're starting to isolate again. You, you know, we are seeing the same things that we saw before you went into treatment the first time. Um, I mean, that's how I've approached it, and and I tend to be much more direct because they've already been through treatment. I'm looking at you're relapsing. You know, you're falling back. I know you can feel it, and. There seems to be an element of, I don't want to admit that because I'm failing. I've been through treatment. I'm supposed to be fine now. Um, and sometimes that's the attitude from family. I don't want to disappoint the family because they've been through treatment. They've been through so much. I don't want to burden them anymore. Part of recovery, well, recovery is not a straight line. Recovery, relapse is part of recovery, unfortunately. We're hoping someday maybe we can get treatment better where it doesn't have to be, but it seems to be part of recovery. You know, you, you, you build skills to try and deal with life's stresses, and you may hit a stress that overwhelms your new skills, and so you have a relapse. Well, now let's use this as a learning tool. Let's go back. So a lot of it is fighting that you're not a failure. This is just another step in recovery. And I think the attitude of the family can do a lot towards supporting that. I think the family members are a crucial part of recovery, and you know so much so that we've basically just made it a requirement of our program that you need to have family participation, and if that's via telephone or Skype, what have you, that your family needs to know about this, and, and they need to be part part of this because what we've discovered is that when families participate in treatment, uh, patients tend to get better and they tend to they tend to stay better. The other thing that we discovered that was really interesting is that. 
after about a year of not engaging in your behaviors, very few people relapse. Now you can still relapse, no doubt about it, but the relapse rate drops dramatically after one year. So really what we're trying to do is we're trying to get everybody involved and everybody on the right path for that one year, minimally for that one year. And if we can get to them to that one year mark, then you don't necessarily drop your guard completely, but the rate of relapse is so low after that that you're almost in the clear. But I agree with Barbara, the relapse is a huge issue and uh, it's sad, but... Uh, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I've dealt with it. Um, I started when I was 18. My first, my first um, time was at UCLA, and I think I was a little more in denial at that time, but I still knew that I had some kind of problem. Um, but like Tony said, that family is extremely important when it comes to it, because even though I was in LA and my parents were in Lodi, I mean, we still did phone, like, we still had um, therapy sessions over the phone, and a lot of things, like, it made a big difference, so family is extremely important. And even though I did relapse, and then I went to another one, and then finally I went to my last one, which was my safer, um, now I'm better. <laughs> I may still struggle, but I'm a lot better. How, how were you, what convinced you to go back into to treatment after the first relapse? You went into the, the second, after you come out of UCLA, remember, and you weren't wanting to go, you. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, my family is really important, but then I was also thinking about my health and thinking about my future and um, having Barbara. I mean, she, you know, she was the one who. I think I did. pretty much was hammering away every time I saw her. You need to go back into treatment. You need to do this. Look, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're not happy you're feeling this, you have to go back to treatment. So it was just like... <coughs> yeah, it was like whipping me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I was like, I'm I was using the, the, my imaginary two by four in my office and just saying, come on. Because when you're in the eating disorder, your brain isn't functioning right. When your brain doesn't get the right nutrition, it's not thinking clearly. So it's very hard to convince a brain that can't think clearly to do the right thing. So sometimes it's just repetition, repetition. So it's okay. Why don't you do it just so you don't have to hear me complain to you every week? And like once, once I noticed that I had the same patterns, like from my first program, and when I came back and I was still doing the same things. At first, I was in denial, but then I started basically sitting down and just thinking about everything that I was doing before and what I was doing again. And I realized that obviously I wasn't better, and I wasn't happy, and I wanted to be happy. And so, you know, after hearing her, um, and after, you know, realizing myself, um, that's when I knew that I needed to get better, and it really helped a lot. So, 